Okay, so we're ready to move on to the next phase, right? We're ready to move into uh, really editing the block in the block editor and, and seeing what all the dynamic block um, properties, I guess, what, what we can do with the dynamic blocks, okay? Because this is the tip of the iceberg right here with the attributes. Oh, before I forget, um, so this is going to be one of the funniest commands. But remember how we double click this and how age is out of order? We know the age at the bottom, it should not be at the top. This whole thing is backwards. It, it, it basically placed these things backwards. You can rearrange the order of attributes in a block by typing Batman. I know that sounds goofy, but it is B-A-T-T-M-A-N and it's block attribute manager. That's what that's for. When you go to the block attribute manager, you can pick which block you want to edit. I don't want to edit form, I want to edit form two, okay? And then uh, I want to move this down because I want age at the bottom and I want name at the top. So I'm going to move that up and that should be it. I'm going to say sync um, and it just matches everything to this um, basically is what it done. It's just matching this block to the properties of this. Um, and you've got like some settings here of what kind of things you want to, I believe, sync block attribute settings. Um, these things, I think, control what's going to be in here. Right now, we have prompt, default modes, and annotative, um, because you can you can force things um, like here. Say cancel. You can force, like, you can double edit and force it to match whatever's in these properties. If that makes sense, like, you double click, edit stuff here, say okay, and then say sync, and it whatever that block is it matches it all instances of that block it'll match okay so like i go back to this now name address age they're all where they should be and because i hit sync or this before this was red it basically overrode that with the properties of the default block which did not have a red color i like that red color i'm gonna put it back no oh, i'm in the wrong one yeah i should have had another drink before this video all right uh, I'm not even the right attribute. There we go. Name, name, properties, color, red, boom. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get this block editor right away. <clears throat> Be is the command or edit in your ribbon. Um, hit okay. Uh, this I'm gonna turn off the grid. I don't like the grid. This brings us to our block editor. The UCS origin in the block editor is the insertion point of the block. When I created my block, I chose the corner of this rectangle as the insertion point of my block. That's where my UCS is at. Keep that in mind, because if I move objects away from this insertion point, it's going to update the block as such. It will move everything. And you can see that. I'm going to close this and discard the changes. I'm going to put a reference line here. Okay. Block edit again. And I'm going to move this object. You'll see that when I go back and I close and hit save, it's been moved away from the reference line, okay? And you can see when I click this, the grip is down here because that is the origin point of the block. So don't move objects unless you know what you're doing because if you move them, it's gonna move them in relation to the origin point. When you go to that block editor, if you hit undo, it'll go back into the block editor, which is where we're at. So I'm gonna hit undo and it puts it back to the origin point, the insertion point of that block. Okay. so. Like I said before, we could stretch this line and bring it in and out. That's not what I want to do. I want it to be dynamic. I don't want to have to come into the block editor every time to do this. So <clears throat> we can make parameters that allow us to stretch this from the outside. And that's all we can do is just stretch. Like all it will let us do. Okay. So I'm going to go into, uh, let's see, where are our, our sets? So this is what you really need to start with. Okay. You have here what are called parameters. You have parameters and you have actions, okay? These are your parameters. These are your actions, okay? You can assign an action to a parameter. And what's nice is you can also uh, have automatically created parameters, um, which using the ribbon, honestly, I don't know. I don't use the ribbon. I've said like a hundred times. Uh, like I'll close the ribbon and uh, no, let me open the ribbon up before I do this. Let me show you what happens. I'm gonna close this, discard the changes. Okay, I'm gonna block edit. Actually, I'm gonna close the ribbon first. Okay, I'm gonna block edit. Form two, hit okay. Uh, instead of 
getting the ribbon, I get this bar. Okay. And I also have pallets, which are not open. It looks like I'm missing some pallets. Um, that's probably part of the issue is that my tool pallets for the block editor are missing. Uh, we're going to go into tool pallets. That property is open. We don't want that one. We want uh, authoring pallets. Is it off screen? Is that the problem? It is. Ugh, I feel like a putz. This is really what you want to what you want to concern yourself with. So I'm going to close this and put that ribbon back and see if that thing pops up again. Let's go to the block editor. There we go. So you can do it here. You can do it here. You have your parameters. You have your actions, which are parameters and actions, and you have your parameter sets. This is like quick functions. These are like parameters that have already been attached or uh, actions that have been attached to the parameters. I'm going to start off with the basic one. We're going to attach uh a, an action to a parameter and then we'll we'll do the same thing by putting in a parameter set so here's what i mean this is a parameter um yeah you have point parameters linear parameters that move things in certain directions polar which will do a, a polar like at an angle basically um this is like an x and y it was a parameter in x and y at the same time angular um an alignment parameter a flip parameter visibility states um, lookup tables, and then like um, a base point parameter. So they all have their specific functions. What we're going to use is a linear parameter because what we want to do is add a linear stretch action to this rectangle. Essentially, what we want to do is pretend like we're stretching this. Um, we are going to stretch this, but we're, we're going to stretch it from outside the block. You know, you can't stretch a block, right? So what we're going to do is make a stretch function by... Um, adding a, li a linear parameter, which looks a lot like a dimension. Okay. This is a, li a, li a, li eh, a linear parameter. It's got two grips, one on each side. Okay. Which we can turn on and off. <clears throat> and it has no, the, the exclamation mark lets us know we have no action assigned to it. It's not doing anything. Um, if you double click or is it double clicking or just typing, just doing edit. You can just do edit command like ed, or you can do it from the properties menu. You can edit the name of it, and we'll call this length. That's going to be our length parameter for this rectangle. Um, and we want to stretch it, so we're going to apply a stretch action. These are all your different actions you can do. Again, there's not too many of them. You can't do a lot, but if you can mix and match these, you can do some pretty cool things. So we're going to do a stretch parameter, or a stretch action attached to this. So you, you just pick the parameter you want to use. We put in this length, I mean this, uh, uh, what was it, linear parameter, and we want to attach this stretch uh, action, okay? And it says, specify parameter base point to associate with action. For this stretch function, where do we want the base point to be? And I do want it on this side. I want to stretch from this point. So I'm just going to say enter. Um, specify the first corner of the stretch frame. So now we have to pretend like, pretend like we're doing a stretch command. So we're going to do a window like we would do in a stretch window. Okay. We picked a bounding box, but we actually have to pick the objects because you can do a, uh, a stretch window. And if I don't select anything, it won't stretch. We have to pick what objects we're going to be including. So we're going to be including this entire thing, which we can just select it or do another window or however we want to do it. Just select this object in some way. And now it knows. And if you hover over this, you'll see that uh, it um, it will show you where that bounding box is and it'll it'll kind of thicken up the parameter that's associated with it. And if you click it, it thickens up the objects that are associated with it. You'll notice also that after the fact that I after I selected it, I have uh, grips and I believe this is new for 2018. I don't think I have this in 2016 at work. Um, you can uh, change the bounding box. So if you for whatever reason need to change that, you can modify that. Alternatively, if you're not using 2018, which a lot of people are not, uh, the way to, to do a new bounding box is right clicking and uh, just saying uh, action selection set, either modify or new selection set. New one just does everything from scratch. Modifying will give you the option to keep your frame. So here it says pick the first corner or of stretch frame. I can just right click and it basically re repeated my, my last one because all I'm doing is modifying. I do this all the time. If I maybe add new objects, like let's say, oh, for whatever dumb reason, I want to add a circle. 
I don't want to change the stretch window. I just want to add the circle to the set. What I'll do is right click, action selection set, modify, and uh, right click. Okay, because it was asking me for a stretch frame. I want to keep the same stretch frame. I just want to add the circle to the mix, to the selection set. That's it. I, but I want to keep the same box. Okay. If you want to modify the box, I'm going to erase this. If you want to modify the box, you might as well just go ahead and hit new, but you can do modify and do a new box. Like I say, I want to do it from here. And again, if I'm only selecting this, which is already selected, just because these are inside that box does not mean they're going to get stretched. They're not selected. Okay. Just how it is. I, I'll even leave it and, and show you what I'm talking about. All right. This is it. We put a stretch function and that's it. The only thing is we want to get rid of this grip. We don't want to give people the option to mess with this side of things. So the way to do that is by selecting the attribute, sorry, selecting the parameter and going to our properties menu. And you can see it says linear parameter, which by the way, you can select a parameter or you can select the action, stretch action. And there's, there's separate properties for each one of those things. So in this case, I'm going to select the parameter, which I did earlier when I edited the name. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, um, you can choose if you want the, the start point to be at the, 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 the original base point we clicked, or if you want it to start from the midpoint, we want the start point. Um, do I want to show the properties? This, this is when you start to show like custom properties or other things. Um, you see this, whatever this distance is from here to here, if I have show properties selected, that distance will be editable in the properties menu when I select the block. And I'll show you that in a second. So I'm going to leave these enabled. Chain actions, they'll be in a depth separate tutorial. I'm going to say no. And number of grips, I'm going to limit to one. Okay. And it knows. It knows that because... Um, you're probably asking yourself, how does it know which grip to choose? When you choose one grip on a linear... On a linear uh, or I guess when you pick the stretch action, but on, on a linear parameter, it will choose... Uh, the grip that's opposite of the base point. Your your one grip will not be the same as your base point. Okay, just so you know that. Like if I would have gone, instead of going from left to right, if I went from right to left, then the grip it chose would be on the left side. I know it's kind of confusing and it's hard to explain that, but just trust that when you choose one grip instead of two, uh, it's going to only put, it, it will not put a grip on the base point. Okay, and that, and that is our base point. You can even see it's got a little X right there. Well, of course it resizes itself, but there's a little X, okay, right there. So that's your base point. We now have everything we need to stretch this block with a stretch parameter. If I close this and hit save, what happens now is when I select this block, oh, of course you're not gonna agree with me. I did save the changes, didn't I? Wow, this thing's really gonna make me look like an idiot right now. Save the changes. Let's insert a new copy of it. Let's see what happens. One, two, three. Like, I can't even pause this. So you're seeing my failures live. I'm not a perfect person. Um. What's interesting about this too, and I, know, I noticed this earlier, but it was giving me this error as if I didn't have a, I didn't as if I didn't have a uh, a parameter attached. So I'm gonna just delete the parameter, and add a new parameter. So I'm gonna go to the stretch function. I'm gonna click this. I'm gonna put it, and that's probably why, I think I didn't pick which side it's associated with. So I had to pick a side, and I want it to be associated with this side, and then I'm gonna pick my frame. Because you can pick which side you want to associate the parameter with. And there, now the little sign goes away. And now when I close and I hit save, there's my grip. And now I can dynamically stretch this after the fact. Booyah! Um, there are other options for this. There are other options with this, and I'll show you later, where you can make this like incremental. Like maybe you don't want to allow people to um, go freehand. You want them to do it like in increments, like quarter range increments or something like that. Or maybe you want to have a minimum distance like, Oh, they can't go any, any closer than this point. You can, you can set it to where they, that there's a minimum distance for this rectangle. And I'll get into that in the next one, but that's the basis 
of creating uh, a stretch parameter um, on a dynamic block. In the next videos, I'm going to go over the rest of, of the uh, parameters uh, that you would commonly use.